go. Hey guys, it's Ashley again from Wholesaling Out of the Box. We're back with part two, depending on how I cut this, of our traction series. Unclear how many parts there are going to be as of right now. So, you know, we'll just keep popping them in the podcast and the YouTube feed until you get sick of them and tell us to stop. So we're going to start by going over chapter two. If you're interested, the first part had the intro and kind of our initial thoughts on the book, overall thoughts. And now we're gonna start diving deeper into the various chapters. So Sean, take it away. Awesome, so guys, uh, we're gonna get into the second part here and that's letting go of the vine. <laughs> this is a tough one, man. And especially from somebody that knows exactly what that feels like, thinking that um, only if I do it, is it gonna be done right? Um, nobody can do it better than me. You know, this whole mentality is nothing but ego driven. That is completely what that is. So, um, if you're not happy with the current state of your company, you have three choices. You can live with it, leave it or change it. If the first two are not an option, it's time to admit that you don't want to live this way any longer. Change is scary. You're not alone in feeling anxious about jeopardizing what you already have. But despite the worries, it's time for shifting and shifting your thinking. You need to change from believing that you are your company and letting it become its own entity. With the right vision, structure, and people in the right place, your company can evolve and realize its full potential. To truly be ready for this change, you must be willing to embrace the following fundamental beliefs. You must build and maintain a true leadership team. Hitting the ceiling is inevitable. and You can only run your business on one operating system, you must be open-minded for growth oriented and be vulnerable. So I'm gonna kind of like just speak to this and let you guys talk about it as well because there's little pieces that you guys do, but letting go of the vine is truly one of the game changers of what I have done to myself and what this company has become. Um, you can't do it all yourself. And you're not that cool. Somebody's way cooler than you and can do better than you. So be okay with that, right? Take that original idea and take those procedures that we talked about before, the SOP, pass it off to somebody else, let them grow with it and let them make it better than what you already had. Um, so that's where I feel me as an owner has taking those pieces, you know, even with Ashley and I starting, getting everything out of my head from, um, really everything seriously everything starting from like what does marketing look like how can we make it better to the one operating system of podio which is our crm that we use and it is the heartbeat of our company um, what is the crm crm what is that stands for? for customer relation management and that pro that system is meant to hold all of your data it's meant to keep you organized it's meant to be mobile right so like we're a virtual company at no point in time does anybody have to go sit in a office right majority of everything is on podio and maybe a google drive google docs google sheets so that don't matter where anybody is it can be accessible so it's not like hey i'm in the office and jacob's not there and he'd sign this contract and the paper's on his desk why right um, Ashley did a form or built something and, and we need access to it. Uh, well, it's on Ashley's computer and she's not here today. We don't have her access code. What? You know, like this kind of stuff is, this is a big piece of this. So letting go of the vine is what has transformed this company from what it was as a one, two man show into what it is today. And that's the only way that you will ever be able to grow your company. So, um, I guess, how do you guys feel against that on growing the vine or letting go of the vine to, to grow? We'll start with Kim. So in this chapter, the thing that resonated the most with me was the last, the last one. So I'll jump to the end, the last statement. Um, you must be open-minded, growth-oriented, and vulnerable. Um, this was key to me um, and reading it here, and it helped me realize that all those years I spent in the military, <laughs> Uh, military is getting better, but they're not so open-minded, not so growth oriented, right? Very regimented, very structured. And now I'm with a team here that's very vulnerable, very transparent, very growth oriented, right? And ready to just put it all on the table and figure out the, you know, the, the solution, right? Figure out how to make something better. Um, 
that's key. You got to be real um, with yourself, with your business, and with your team. Um, so that 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 whole section there was all good stuff in the second chapter. But that's really what resonated with me, one hundred percent. Awesome, Jacob. Yeah. So since since Cam touched on uh, the open minded and you know being growth oriented, um, I'll touch on the leadership aspect of it. So maintaining the true leadership team, right? So like we've said it, we said it in the previous episode, but when, when choices are made within the company to bring on a new member to the team, the current members all have a conversation about that. And we all decide whether or not that person's ultimately a good fit. And then immediately when we all decide that, yes, we would like to bring that person on the first conversation that Sean has is expectations and core values and whether or not that person actually stands for what we do as a company. Right. So vetting your team members, I think, is, is an incredibly important piece of this. And because ultimately, at the end of the day, like, that's what allows us to feel comfortable in sharing, you know, the nitty gritty details that aren't always the most fun stuff to bring up, right? So it's just being real. It's being transparent. Like you said last time, Sean, we're, we're, our company is glass, right? We're all extremely transparent with each other. We're all honest forthcoming with information we don't hold anything back and the reason that we're able to do that is because we all trust each other genuinely to the core because we all share the same core values and we all understand what this company is and where we want it to grow so putting people you know in those positions and having that transparency and accountability and allowing people to be on the same page and empowering and so on that's incredibly important so just to yeah i wanted to bring that up based on what you and Cam had already talked about. Just another piece. Ashley. Yeah. So this one really hit home for me because like I talked about, it was me, Sean and his previous partner. And then the partner left. And then it was kind of me and Sean for a pretty significant amount of time. And then we brought some more people on and we started training them, but it was still kind of me and Sean and trying to train them. And then we got to the point where it was something as simple as, okay, well, I think they need to, and Sean said this to me and I didn't want to do it, but he was like, I think they need to write the purchase and sales agreements on their own. And I'm like, but, but what if they forget to add in the feasibility study or, or something like that? And he's like, okay, well, how can we, how can we make it so that they can't forget? Well, we can put it into our system so that it's automatically added to the contract so that there is no forgetting it. And just little things like that, that sometimes it's, you know, like Sean said, ego driven where no one can do it as, as well as I can. And we all have that ego, even if we don't think we do. And I know for me, that's harder to come to terms with sometimes, but then I need to realize, okay, it's better this way. And lately, especially with Cam going on dispositions, he's moved from part-time to full-time and honestly, it's been a big help to me. Um, I was thinking about this over the past week, just how much I've sort of pushed off on Cam. <laughs> and he's, he's accepted a lot of it and has taken over. And I'm like, oh God, we, we were talking about SOPs and stuff on Wednesday, I think it was. And I was like, after we got off, I was like, man, I'm glad I don't have to do that because <laughs> he's going to do it for me or for the company. But I was like, yeah, whew. I don't have to do that. So that's nice. I just sat on the phone with him and talked it, talked it through with him for a little while. So but. that goes back to delegating. Mm -hmm. So elevating, delegating, which ultimately gets down to Cam will take over that role. And then there will be somebody that Cam will ultimately bring underneath to him that will be responsible for that role. Because this goes back to letting go of the vine and letting go of what needs to be done, not by you, because it's not the best use of your time. So ultimately across the board, the team you're hearing, anybody listening to this podcast is hearing different pieces of the vine getting let go so that that person can grow, but then the piece is still being done. And is it getting done better than it was before should always be the case. Improving is another piece of this. That's mostly important right? Understanding that you built something as a foundation, it needs to be passed off to the right person to sit in the right seat to take it and roll with it. Okay. So really, really good feedback there, guys. Um, Before we move off of this, I think it's really important to touch on Cam's role in dispositions lately. So because we're the ones talking about letting go of the vine, but Cam is the one that's taking up the vine now. 
And okay. what does it look like from your perspective, Cam? Like, yeah, what sure. did we do right? What did we not do right? And things like that. I mean, we'll, we'll tell anyone that will listen. We like constructive criticism. We want totally. to get better. Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, I mean, within the first few days of moving into dispositions, right, Sean and I spent hours <laughs> on Zoom just going through every process. And then Ashley and I spent hours going through every process, more on the system side, right? And Sean more on the side of, hey, here's how I'm looking for cash buyers. Here's how we're comping out things when we're trying to um, uh, wholesale them, right? Find them buyer. Um, good processes because there's videos there um, to walk me through everything. And then, you know, but kind of going back to what Jacob was saying earlier, um, I tried to approach it with a mindset of I don't want to change anything too big within the first 60, 90 right, days. Um, because it might just be me not understanding it fully in the way it is. And we have changed minor things, but um, I've kind of kept a running list going of maybe what should be changed for that person who comes in. Um, because like Sean said, the ultimate goal is to make the process better, right? But you don't want to spend your first moments moving into that position, whoever that is, just trying to change everything because it was obviously set that way for a reason. Now, we don't want to maintain the status quo if there's a better way to do it, but, you know, try to fully understand the position, which is kind of how I approached it. Um, and you guys have been really helpful throughout that. Keep asking me if I need help. I need help, you know. Um, personally, I'm a guy that just needs to be there and be in it and be swimming in it, right, and just absorbing it. And then um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spit some of it back out. You know what I mean? It's going to happen. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been a great transition. So nothing – overwhelming too much information slash too much work currently you feel like it's an easy transition slash flow even with the stuff that you, you know Ashley said that she's giving you the vine to hold on to yeah 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 it is yeah. um like I think I mentioned before I think I'm I was thankful that the first month right we maybe only had like really one transaction that I worked through it was a good slow transition and that just happened to be the way it was it's not like we planned that now I have multiple transactions going on, so I'm a little bit ready for that. Yep, and kind of like I mentioned last week, I mean, if we all of a sudden have, oh, shit, five five transactions, you might need a little help, you know, but yeah. I'm good right now. Yep. Cool. Okay. So That's it was awesome. a slow So it was a slow turn on for you, Cam, over time so that you weren't going to be overwhelmed taking on all of this new work. And then, yep. Sean, like, I mean, we've talked about it internally, but you had a couple of, a couple of moments where you kind of checked back in and we're kind of like, we, we talked about it, right? Like you, you started a new lane and then you started to dip back in a little bit. Like, did you want to mention that at all as well? Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Like get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> totally. <laughs> like, because it's really hard when you think about, and this is just from anybody listening to this or just you guys listening to me talk, but it's really hard to let go of what is ultimately the sales <laughs> funnel in in goal like hey how you're gonna make the money right like i know from and starting from my by myself to having my partner to having ashley to, to going back to just me and ashley like it's really hard but i know what it feels like i know what you got to do and it's like okay it's grit grind hustle time go you got to sell shit you got to make money so it's just almost like a mental secondary click you know what i mean like Oh, well, I know how to do that. I know how to fix it. Let me just jump back over here and fix it versus no, get out of the way. Let the person you brought in do what they're good at. Know what they need to know. If they have questions, they'll ask you. Some things will get screwed up. They'll figure it out. That's part of this process. And yes, it's very hard from an owner standpoint to sit back and watch that because you're letting go of the vine. It's hard, right? So until you are in that role and seeing it and then you try to do it and you're like, oh my God, just stop you're totally jacking shit right now. Just get out of the way. Then you start to understand like, man, I don't even need to be, I need to be around. I just don't need to be in and around. Like that's totally agreeable. Totally agree with you on that 120%. It's a very hard process, which is why this is a really good chapter of letting go of the vine and back to the original statement of like, <laughs> get the hell out of your own way. It's so real. So yeah, that's, those are all good feedbacks and statements. Before we move on, sorry, I think it's really important to say for those of you that are listening or watching that might be new in real estate or wholesaling specifically, this is not for you yet. 
the most important thing of letting go of the vine is that you have created something and you know how to do things so that you can let go and pass that vine successfully. Let you, go you of a vine. Huh? <laughs> let go of a vine there needs to be a vine first <laughs> yeah there has to be a vine or you know if you're in the relay you don't want to fumble the baton yes. so you need to have a good grip on the baton so that you can pass it off yes. and that's i i know we just talked about easing into it but if you're starting out a new real estate business or you're starting out at wholesaling specifically which is what we talked to it is a lot of information it's a fire hose if you join our program that intro uh, onboarding email I send you, it's really long. But at the end, I have like five points and I'm like, you know, TLDR, too long, didn't read, here you go. These are the five things you need to do. Every week you get an email telling you what you need to do that week, along with refreshing you on what you're working on, like different things you might've read or seen in the initial onboarding process but you were too overwhelmed to recognize in the moment. Okay. And so that's just, you know, it's a lot, uh, but you have, to, you have to have something there. You have to grow the vine so that you can pass it. Totally. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, building a true leadership team. Would you prefer a dictatorship or, true, or a true leadership team approach to running your business? Both leadership methods can work, so you have to decide. The philosophy of this book advocates a healthy leadership team approach where you build a team of people that define the company's vision with you. These leaders all have a clear accountability and must be able to take an initiative over the respective departments, AKA stay in your lane. <laughs> you must also all remain open and honest about all issues and being willing to fight for what is best for the company as a whole. Um, I'm going to finish reading this because it's, it finishes it out and it's a good statement. So your job right now is to select your leaders wisely. If they don't already work in your organization, you'll have to find them elsewhere. Once your team is in place, each member needs to agree that the problems in the organization are also his or her responsibility. Once they take responsibility for the problem, then they can help you solve it. The next leap of faith you have to take is this. As goes the leadership team, so goes the company. Your leadership team must be present and united front to the organization itself. In a nuclear family, when the child doesn't like the answer from the mom, he or she might go to dad. If your company, if your company there can only be only one answer, your leadership team needs to be parent, needs to be parent everyone to greatness. Uh, needs to parent everyone to be greatness. Okay, learn to read. <laughs> All right. So overall, this is kind of a recap of what Ashley was just saying, which is you need to build it first. You have to have a vine and you have to understand what you are going to teach somebody to do. There has to be an SOP, a standard operating procedure. There has to be something you understand in order to relay the baton. I like that example. So having this is a very, very important piece in order to let go of it. So if you, you are the cook, the dishwasher, the owner, the bookkeeper, you're doing all that in the beginning, right? If you're doing this from ground zero. So as coming into whole sign out of the box, we help you with that foundation. We start you with those pieces. And like Ashley said, there is a fire hose of information, but if you take it in bite-sized pieces and just grind through it, it allows you to follow the process. Don't buck the system, follow the process. That is what this is about, okay? Don't reinvent the wheel. When you're coming into a group, take the ownership and go with what they're giving you, right? Take ownership and hold it. Like, hey, I want to learn. I don't want to reinvent the wheel here. I'm not going to go stuck. You've been stuck on YouTube University forever, right? That's why you joined this group. We're here to help you. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use this information. Go with it. Understand all of it. Ask questions, right? So those that are part of the group also have that Facebook group to do that in. So um all right good talk there on the i, mean, I think we kind of got through that as we all spoke to the leadership team um and then ashley finished that out pretty well so the next part of this is hitting the ceiling is inevitable organizations usually expand in spurts by smashing through a series of ceilings reaching the natural limits of your existing resource is a byproduct of growth and a company continually needing to adjust its existing state 
if it hopes to expand through the next ceiling. Your leadership team needs to understand this because you will hit the ceiling on different levels as an organization, departmentally, and individuals. In all of these instances, growth is your only option. If you're not growing, be intentionally or externally, you're dying. Man, is that not one of the statements I always say? <laughs> if you're not existent, if you're not consistent, you're non-existent. You know what I mean? Like, man. All right, so most companies strive for external growth, but external growth also leads to future greatness. In fact, most companies need to start with focus on the internal growth before they can even think about external growth. The paradox is that they will actually grow faster externally in the long run if they are focused internally from the outset. So once you understand hitting the ceiling is inevitable and your leadership team must employ five leadership abilities to reach the next level. And the following five are simplify the organization, delegate and elevate, predict both long-term and short-term, systemize and structure your company the right way. So I'm gonna stop here for a second and um, I want you guys to give me a little bit of feedback on this and what you guys are feeling. Cause I think this is a really good point of what do you think? Cause it's going to get in here next to the EOS, but what do you guys think about this? This uh, hitting the ceiling is inevitable and the growth part cam. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, hitting the ceiling, like just in terms of what we're currently doing, right. I'm currently looking at numbers and where the leads are coming from. Right where the money is best spent is the money is best spent, you know, in different marketing pieces, mail, online, texting, whatever. We're continually looking at that because we don't want to hit the ceiling and just keep putting out the money into the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. If we're not getting the return we expect, right? And number three, predicting both long-term and short-term and our numbers every week is how we do that. You know, like going back to what Ashley's saying that during holidays, we can, predict that there's going to be a decrease in calls, right? There's going to be a decrease in customer activity. Um, and knowing those short-term and long-term numbers is how we are right now in a record-breaking year, 2020, on our goal to, to making that 500,000 gross. So um, it's important to know that, yeah, there, there's that ceiling there and you're going to hit it, but how are you going to bust through it, right? Um, that, that's what I take from that. Cool. Jacob? Yeah. So, man, I got, I have so many different thoughts going on in my head about this, uh, this particular subject. So I'm going to kind of hit all five bullets going down the list a little bit here. So simplifying the organization, right? So Sean and Ashley, before Cam and I were brought into the company, did a really great job as far as understanding what the vision was and understanding what seats they needed to fill. So Sean being the visionary, Ashley being the integrator, doing everything in the background, right? Sean consistently thinking of, What's the, what's the next biggest and better thing, right, that our company is going to move forward with? And then Cameron and I doing acquisitions and dispositions, right? So very simple, very basic, very structured. We all have our own lane. We all stick to those lanes. So simplify the organization, right? Delegate and elevate. This is where we start to get to, I would say, a, a point throughout the day where as an individual, you have a limited amount of capacity for what you can accomplish in any given day, right? Like me, I still have a full-time job, right? That's eight to 10 hours of my day that is gone immediately. We are one of our core values immediately, family, right? Spending time with my wife, making that a priority. So how do I fit real estate into the mix? Well, sometimes if I can't get to a specific task, then I have to go and figure out a way to delegate that out. What that looks like in acquisitions, and Cam really can speak to this better than uh, probably majority of us, but Cam has done an amazing job working with the virtual assistants within the organization, reaching out to them, putting processes in place, and allowing them to do all of the work that would just be a time suck for somebody like us. Because our, our time best spent is on the phone or in front of sellers trying to negotiate contracts. That's what Cam and I need to focus on. And then Cam, with the dispo side, of course, is then selling the contract to the end buyer. So how do we take everything else that is inherently part of that role and then delegate it out so that it is no longer part of our responsibility, right? So that's delegate and elevate. Predicting both long-term and short-term, a lot of that comes back to, and I can speak to that with the systemized too because that they kind of run together, but you're talking about processes and then you're talking about KPIs and tracking numbers. Like 
we can predict long-term and short-term contracts and how much money the company is potentially going to pull in in any given month based on measuring what, you know, what we've done in the past. So how many calls went out? How many appointments did we go on? How many contracts did we get? What is the percentage number of contracts that are set to close? So we know all of that, which allows us to ultimately predict what our performance is going to be. And that's a massive key. Systematizing, I mean, that's kind of integrated into what I just talked about, but that would be the Podio, the systems, working with virtual assistants inside of those workspaces and creating that type of process that, that allows everyone in the company to see it at any given time and tweak it as necessary and just be successful with it because we've already put those processes in place. And then five, structuring your company. I mean, if you... Oh no. <laughs> so this has happened a lot in our meetings with Jacob guys. He uh, he sort of freezes a little bit. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get him back up and running in a minute. Cut, cut and chop, cut um, and chop. Yeah, I know. I didn't know if it was just me. Okay. Yeah, the video may remain the same, but I'll uh, tweak the audio a little bit. You guys, you guys all kind of paused for me, so I was like, oh shit, it's me. Go ahead and mute him until he comes back. Okay. And he was on a roll, too. <laughs> oh, Jacob, are you back? <laughs> I gotta unmute him. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, but it won't let me. I think he muted himself. Oh. Uh. Oops, hold on. <laughs> Did it again, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to unmute. Unmute! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Damn it. I'm so pissed. Oh, I'd like, oh. Man, we were doing so good, guys. I think I'll have to add the explicit tag back to, back to this one. <laughs> Damn it. I literally wrapped everything up into a nice little bow. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> anyway, what was the last thing you guys heard? Um, uh, I think you were talking about one. Podio. Okay, so the systematizing aspect of it? No, yeah. you were talking about structuring your company the right way. Oh, okay. Oh, so I got almost all the way through it? Yeah, you're yeah. talking about how like the structure of the company and the way that Ashley and I had set it up and then that's where you started r 2 d 2 Okay, you're talking about at the end though? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah, so just like, I guess taking all the systems and everything, like what I had said was when you take everything that I just said and you wrap all of that around, that's what I'm talking about by structuring the company in the right way, right? We have the right people in the right seats, which is going to be a conversation for a different chapter, of course, right? But we have everybody that we need to have. It's very simple. It's very basic. And then we have the systems and the processes in place to understand what our ceilings are as a company. And then not only just as a company, but as individuals going back to being able to delegate tasks to VAs and so on to free up ourselves to do what we do best in our particular roles. So I hope that I hope that everything I just said. I, ho I hope that Ashley is able to cut it up where you guys can actually hear the entirety of it in one go. Um, but I mean, extremely critical, right? And that's exactly what we're talking about here. So, cool. All right. So the next part of this is you can oh, only. Wait, run... I had stuff. Oh, sorry. I can please. Skip over <laughs> you. So sorry. Um. Yeah. Well, I just really wanted to touch it on the internal growth aspect of this yes. because I think that is super important. When we had the personnel shakeup in the great personnel shakeup of September 2018, <laughs> um, we could not, we did not have the internal capability to do what we do right now. I mean, this is something where we have four, three and a half sort of aspects of our business. And that is the basic wholesaling, wholesaling out of the box, which is our mentorship program, which is where you get this podcast and everything. Um, buy and holds and we've dabbled a little bit in rehabs and we're, that's something that we're going to try to expand a little bit more going into the end of this year, beginning of next year. And so with those four main parts of our business, you know, I would not, if we were, had this kind of, um, demand on our time that we did then we would not have survived. And a lot of why we can do that now is because we have grown so much internally. We've done things, you know, like with wholesaling out of the box, we've created a lot of 
those weekly emails that go out to anyone that's part of the group, the things that we do on Facebook to interact, the CRM setup, C customer relationship management manager. Everything that we have in the background was done little by little, project by project, and now contributes to our success to, so that we know, okay, if we can't focus on this one aspect of our business this week, that's fine. And, you know, if, oh, words, but yeah, so if we can't focus on this one aspect right now, that's okay. And we're going to be able to push through it because we have the internal checks in place so that nothing's going to fall apart. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So this next one is you can only run your business on one operating system. You must have one abiding vision, one voice, one culture, and one operating system. This includes a uniform approach on how you meet, how you set priorities, how you plan to set your vision, the terminology you use, and the way you communicate with employees. EOS is an operating system that puts everybody on the same page. Just as a computer program is made up of components that organize activity and various data into systems that enable its users to be more productive, EOS does the same for your business. So this piece, guys, is a massive piece that I speak to all the time. Having a CRM, and I don't care what it is. I, I speak to Podio all the time because that's what we know, and it's very user-friendly, and you can build a lot of stuff on it. Have some kind of CRM so that you are organized. If you are the person, the, the lady or the man walking around with notebooks, you are going to lose time and money. No questions about it. I was the guy. Right. So five notebooks, figuring stuff out, not being able to know what I was doing, not able to follow up, just really bad operations. Right. So most important, find a CRM system of some sort. I don't care what it is. Do not get stuck in the Excel world. Find a just Google it. But if you really want to like get down to the brass tacks of it, focus on Podio because that's one that we know. We understand how it works. We've built out. And we've actually given to you when you've joined us. Um, it's that's also something. super user friendly. Super user friendly. You can build a lot of things on that, guys. A lot of, and you don't, Ashley's very smart and she's built a lot of things on it, but it's very user friendly, right? So you can, it's, it's able to use, I mean, you can really get down to the nitty gritty on it and pretty easily, right? But man, get organized. Do not skip this, do not skip this piece. So have an operating system, very important. Just so um, you know, EOS stands for Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurial Operating System. Yes. And that comes from the book. That's right. All right, the next part of this is you must be open-minded, growth-oriented, and vulnerable. You have to be willing to be open to new and different ideas. If you don't know something, you have to admit it that you don't know it. <laughs> you have to be willing to ask and receive help. Most of all, you have to know your strength and your weaknesses and let other people who are more skilled than you in certain areas take charge. You cannot embark on this journey if you're not willing to be vulnerable. You have to let your guard down to see your organization for what it is. Eliminate facades with your leadership team and invite openness and honesty. You must also be growth oriented to take this journey. So this kind of goes back to a little a few pieces that we've talked about a few times, um, being open with your team, being transparent. I mean, like we've said, I like to say we as a company are glass. We're very transparent. We're very open um, so that everybody can be on the same page, right? There is no judging and brainstorming. I love to use that one because it's real, <laughs> right? We're sitting down, coming up with ideas, throw them out. I got that from my wife a long time ago, right? We're sitting down talking about things we want to do. I came into my company. Like you talking about ideas doesn't need to be judging. You need to be listening and open to see what happens, right? It's only going to work when everybody can freely flow. So leadership team would be what we have right now, right? You have Ashley doing things in the background and taking care of a lot of pieces that have to operate in order for this company to work. You have Cam running acquisitions and Dispo and you have Jacob running acquisitions. So 
all these pieces only work together if each individual person can come and bring their strengths or ideas to the table so that you can grow, right? There is never, ever a problem with having that open conversation. And if you are in the beginning of this, be open to it. Use the group as that, that standing point. So you can ask questions and be comfortable with it. We are very open in that Facebook group, right? I love the transparency in that group. I also like the fact that guys can feel vulnerable in there and feel as though like that's okay, right? Come in there, ask questions. We're not judging you. We want you to break and tear things up and fix it and put it back, right? Let's <laughs> make with the game. So um, how do you guys feel in that open-minded, growth-oriented and being vulnerable as part of one of us? Are part as our company and what we do do you feel as though that's a thing do you feel as though that's what we do can oh yeah absolutely i don't think that there's <clears throat> any e well I, I think everybody has an ego right but i don't think any of us have a problem checking checking the other person's ego right and dialing into what their strengths and weaknesses are i could tell you i could tell you guys your strengths and weaknesses from my perspective right and I know that when I have a problem or something I'm working on, I know, you know, to bring it to the team, right? Bring it to the table and we can figure it out because <laughs> there's so many things that I'm like, man, I don't know what to do, but we bring it up in here and we hash it out. And it's something I never thought of. Right. And that's just me stepping away from my ego and being like, I don't have all the answers to these questions because I don't, because I'm not the smartest person in the room. Right. Um, and I'm fine with that. And we can all, go further together right so i think that that's the key part of there for me cool jacob yeah i feel like um our team has done a really good job with the human aspect of the business right because we're all people um we all have our own issues we all have uh, our own time commitments and so on that just have to happen on a daily basis and um and i think that we all do a really good job of being aware of that <clears throat> you know like there are there are weeks where um, like prime example, there are weeks where the calls can't get in for acquisitions, right? And we have to have conversations about that. And, and it's, a, it's an understanding. Like, I, I know that it was something that was missed, right? The team knows that it was something that was missed. And, you know, it go, going back to issues, right? It's something that has to be discussed because is it a problem that does require additional solving, right? So, or was it just something that happened due to circumstances, right? But either way, we need to be able to have those conversations so that we as a team can figure out if there needs to be a next step so that it doesn't hold up any other portions of the process. So because if calls aren't getting made, appointments aren't being gone on, Cam can't do acquisitions. If Cam doesn't do acquisitions, Ashley's not doing closings. Like all of that stuff has a direct impact and a direct effect on how we work together as a team and as a company. So I think just being, being aware of the human aspects and, you know, I think the term being thrown around a lot nowadays is the emotional intelligence aspect of it. So understanding that, you know, people do have real time commitments and they, they have constraints, but at the same time, you have to be honest about all of that. And you have, you have to talk about it if it does in fact rear its head and become a, a potential issue. So, and I think that we have a team, we as a team have done a, a fantastic job at that. And I think that we do a great job of that in the group as well. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that there are some, wholesaling out of the box members that are listening to, to the program that can resonate with that. You know, when it, when it comes to our Friday meetings, like being able to open up and be like, yeah, man, I didn't get my calls done or yeah, no, like I, I meant to go out and drive for dollars this past week, but I didn't like, that's just reality. And sometimes things happen, but you also have to be man enough to talk about it. If you are a man or woman enough to talk about it, if you're a woman and you just have to be able to, to have those conversations. And then the rest of the people also need to understand that, yeah, shit happens, right? Like we've all been there and we, you know, it's not going to be the, uh, it's not going to be the last time it'll happen. So, but is it something that needs to be addressed and can we talk about it? That's extremely important. Ashley. Yeah. Well, and I think there's another side to this as well. Being open-minded, growth oriented and vulnerable is super important to you as a business, but I think you also need to be respectful. I mean, we've had people that we've worked with in the group, outside of the group, that are not necessarily respectful of our time, for example. We get some people that ask a question, a leading question, like, well, don't you think RBMs are like this? Or, 
something like that where they want you, it, it's confirmation bias. They want you to confirm what they think. And then when you don't do that, they get upset. And I think that's super important when not only in your own business, in your own company, but when you're working with other people, you have to keep what Sean said, there's no judgment in brainstorming. And it, unless you're trying to change my mind on RPMs, because again, very illegal, you should not be doing them. Um, but other than that, you know, you do need to be open minded and be able to talk about those things and be willing to accept, huh, what I was thinking about for this aspect of marketing, calls, etc., may not be the best course of action. Whether and and don't just listen to one source on that either. Maybe you're hearing that from a couple different people, or you hear it from us and you're like, hmm, that's something to think about, but I'm not sure I'm ready to change my business yet. Either way, both inside and outside of your organization, you need to be able to accept other people's thoughts, constructive criticism, as long as it's helpful, not, you know, just outright mean things to say, and things like that. But I do, we really, really do say there's no judgment in brainstorming. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times Sean and I have been on a call and I'm like, okay, well, what if we do this? And Sean gives me this look and I'm like, yeah, you're right. Not a good idea. And he's like, no, there's no judgment in brainstorming. I just, I, I don't get it. And then we talk about it some more and decide, you know, is that a good path? Is it not? Who knows? We'll figure it out. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So this is the last piece of this one we're going to talk to, and it's going to, we're going to kind of take a little bit more time on it. Um, and actually you might have to chop this up a little bit, but because we're going to probably be constrained on our window time. Um, but this next piece is, this is a really big one, the vision component. Well, um, before we do that, um, okay. let's just stop the recording and restart. And I can do that without us leaving because this is okay. going into chapter three. So um, yeah, that's it on chapter three. Um, okay. <laughs>